Okay, looks like we're on chapter 15, the last of the series for chapter 13, 14, and 15, looking at our vessel network or the vascular system. You have three types of vessels here, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Just remember arteries A for a way. Anything that is leaving the heart is considered an artery. A lot of the times we like to say arteries are carrying oxygenated blood, but there is a pair, two pairs of arteries that do not carry oxygenated blood. And they're called arteries because they're leaving the heart. They're leaving going to the lungs, so they haven't picked up oxygen just yet. And they're called pulmonary arteries. You have two on each side. So they're branching off, going to the lungs, no oxygen yet. So you can't say all arteries carry oxygen because those pairs do not. Veins return to the heart. Capillaries, they're going to be where you see your exchange happening. So they're going to be a, we call it a capillary bed sometimes because that's where they're going to drop off oxygen, pick up CO2, nutrients, things like that. There are layers to vessels and this is possibly a labeling that you'll have to do as well, so know these layers. Tunica externa, so that seems to be pretty easy. It's the outer layer, it's a lot more, um, it's stronger because that's the one that's gonna dilate and constrict. It can withstand a lot of pressure. Then you have an inner layer, tunica media, and I think muscle because that is the smooth muscle of the vessel that can constrict and dilate. The very inner layer is the tunica intima, so it's, say, think of inside, in. And what type of characteristic do you think it has? Would it be smooth or rough? Smooth. Nice and smooth, because if it was rough, what's gonna happen to those platelets? They're going to stick to whatever rough edges they have. We don't want them to stick. So veins leaving the heart. They are thinner walled than arteries because of why? What type of pressure do you have in arteries? A lot of pressure. A whole lot of pressure. So veins, we're coming back to the heart. We don't have a whole lot of pressure, so we don't have to be really thick. Yes? Sorry. You're fine. I'm losing it with the appendicular devices. Yes. Today. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Um, could you go back to that other slide? The what? The in, intima or whatever. Yeah. What, is, what kind of tissue is made up of that? Like, this must be a question on the uh, yeah. on the workbook. What type? What type of cells are those? They're uh, squamous. Squamous. Yeah. Squamous. Yes, they're squamous cells. So yeah. they're what? What type of tissue though? Epithelial. Epithelial. Golly, we got some smart ones in here. Nice. Like me. So the inner wall, those walls are thinner. Um, they have a huge ability to stretch, so dilate and then constrict back down. Your veins are your ones that are. They are controlling the majority of the blood pressure, as far as fluctuating it, making it go up or down. And that's what we call vasoconstriction. It's our veins that are constricting vasodilation as well. So they play a big part in that, where arteries play a little part. Now veins, um, we will go down into even smaller veins called venules. So you'll have veins are the big ones, and then go into venules, then we'll hit capillaries. So these are your, your tiny ones. Then we have some medium-sized ones and then some large ones, like your subclavian vein is the largest vein. And we'll look at those when we do our mapping of the heart and circulation. Now capillaries, so we'll go from, when we're, when we're going down uh, from arteries, let me see if they talk about that. They kind of jumped. They don't talk about arterioles. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come off of, right off the heart with the aorta, which is your largest artery. Then you'll hit an artery of some kind. 
Then you'll hit really small, and the, and the arteries will get smaller and smaller until you hit the smallest, which is called an arteriole. So it's arteries to arterioles. Then we have a bed of capillaries. Now going back to the heart, you're gonna go backwards because it's gonna go small to bigger as we're returning to the heart. So leaving the heart, we go from really, really big to small, 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 small to the smallest capillaries. Now we'll start small, getting bigger, 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 going back to the heart. So the smallest, we'll hit arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and that's what they're showing you here. We'll hit venules, then some medium-sized veins, and then some really large veins. So if you just think ar arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, veins. And I always make that a little note card or something and just do arrows. Or you can draw pictures and then label those pictures. So a really big red one, artery. Smaller red one, arterioles. Red and blue, maybe purplish color, capillaries. Going back would be venules, a smaller blue, bigger blue, veins. That's it. And you can then you can draw a heart on top of it. So I would do, if it was me making note cards, I would do something like this. So leaving really, really big. And I would label that an artery. And then it would come back down to smaller, which would be arterioles. I don't have a purple, so I'll do capillaries, green. Then I'll do, not that. Then I'll do a little bit bigger, and I would label that venules, and then I'll do a really big one, a vein. And that's my note cards. I draw pictures when I do my note cards. It looks like he's got big muscles. So capillaries, where we're ending up at, this is where all of our exchange happens. Um, how many layers? Is this going to be a simple epithelial or a stratified epithelial capillaries? Mm -hmm. Why simple, though? It is simple. One single layer of thin cells that are interlocked. Yes, because we're having things going in and out of those vessels now. And so there's little holes between each and every little capillary where they're fitting together at. And that's important because we want things to come in and out of those. So these are tiny, very thin. So veins, veins are called capacitance vessels because why? Uh, because they can constrict extensively. They can constrict. Now, extensively, questionable. They can stretch. They're very elastic. They convey blood back to the heart. Uh, they contain one-way valves. All these are true, but <coughs> capacitance means the capacity. It's something to hold something. So it can stretch is what it means. They're just throwing you a big word up there. Yeah, they can stretch. They can really do all those things. Looking at capillaries again. So if we're leaving the heart, we're in big arteries. We hit a little bitty one called arterioles. And then there's little sphincters. They're kind of like valves, but they're, they're smooth muscles. So the involuntary little muscles around these capillaries, the openings to what we call the capillary bed. And what they do is they regulate the pressure coming into that. So if we're not doing a lot of work, we're not exercising or anything, then those sphincters may be a little closed and letting blood come in slowly to whatever tissue this is. Now if we're exercising, see here's closed ones where we're just letting a little bit go through that one main capillary. Now if we're exercising, and we need lots of exchange, then all those sphincters would be open and we would flood that area. So they get, they get flooded with blood to increase that exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen as well as nutrients. So arteries up here, we hit arterioles, we hit capillaries, we hit venules, then we'll hit a big vein. So 
that's just showing you the network. Two-way exchange, meaning we pick up stuff and we drop off stuff. And we'll have three different types of exchange happening. This was back from chapter two or three, two, I think. So diffusion, if we're talking about diffusion, we're talking about particles. So the particles that we're talking about in particular are oxygen and CO2. So as the blood's coming through those capillaries that are one single layer of squamous epithelial cells, then we'll pick up CO2 from the tissue because it was doing cellular respiration and spitting out CO2. And then we'll drop off our oxygen as those red blood cells are rolling through that capillary. You need to remember from chapter two that filtration, well, let me go back. Remember from chapter two on diffusion means there's a whole bunch of CO2, no, there's a whole bunch of CO2 in the tissue and there's just a little bit maybe in the blood. So which way is CO2 gonna go? Yeah, it's gonna go to the lowest concentration. It's gonna go where there's not, it's not so crowded. And vice versa with the oxygen. So if we did cellular respiration, we've used up a lot of our oxygen. So there may be a little bit of oxygen there. move him because he controls my camera. So there may be a little bit of oxygen in the tissue still, but there's a whole bunch crowded in here and they don't like to be crowded. So they go from a, a high concentration to a low concentration. They just exchange across each other. So that is diffusion. From low to from high to low concentration, they'll move, particles. Whereas filtration, the biggest, the key point to filtration is you need pressure. So lots of pressure coming into those, those uh, capillaries will cause whatever is in those capillaries to be pushed out and ooze into the tissue. So that may be so that could possibly be, I know I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff with my screen. So that could be fluid as well as particles with, with, with filtration. So here they're showing you a good example of glucose being pushed out, amino acids, so we can use amino acids for energy, as well as plasma, so that's the water part, the fluid. So think about with high blood pressure, What's happening to our legs? What's happening to the tissue in our legs? It does. It creates cram for cram full of plasma. So what hap what do they look like? Mm -hmm. They swell up. So now you see why we have edema with with high blood pressure. Because it's higher than normal. So it's pushing out even more fluid. And then because the vessels are, are squeezed and we don't have a lot of them circulating, that fluid can't return. Our lymph system has a hard time trying to get that fluid out of the tissue. It can be overwhelmed. So have you ever seen, Walmart's always the best place to assess patients because they'll be all walking around there um, or on their little scooters and you can assess their skin, their legs. But have you seen people with really, really large legs and they're wrapped with ace bandages at Walmart? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's lymphedema. Oh, that's, isn't that when you like have cancer and they take out nope. lymph nodes? No, nope, but they can take out lymph no nodes and then you have lymphedema. Yeah, so but those patients are normally morbidly obese, mm -hmm. so they're really, really heavy. That again, decreases circulation and those, just like the vessels, our lymph vessels have to circulate as well. And they use a lot of muscle contraction and hydrogen bonding to return all that fluid back to the heart. So if you have a lot of excess fat and we can't circulate that, well then it stays there. So what they do is they'll wrap it in 
uh, ace bandages and try to put a lot of pressure on it to help squeeze it back. They do that at Walmart? You'll see them at Walmart, walking okay. around at Walmart, riding okay. scooters oh. at Walmart. <laughs> so that's, that is filtration. Uh, colloid osmotic pressure, so a little bit different. Um, so not only are we having our pressures coming through, but now we need to be able to remove some of that excess fluid as well. There is a protein that is very important about keeping our blood pressure or kind of retaining that plasma, that water part of our blood in the vessels. And that very extremely important protein is called albumin. Albumin um, attracts water. So without it, our, our blood pressure doesn't stay where it needs to be. You'll see problems with albumin with malnutrition. So some of your elderly can have low albumin levels. And you'll see it with liver disease patients, so cirrhosis of the liver. And what is, why is because your liver makes a lot of your proteins. And one of your proteins that it makes is albumin. So if you have someone that has cirrhosis of the liver, in the end stages, they get a really big, large belly. And that's called ascites. So it gets huge to where they look pregnant. And sometimes they have to go into the hospital and have it drained. And it's because they don't have albumin running through their vessels, attracting that fluid. So that fluid then goes backwards and goes out into the tissues and you see all that swelling. I mean, you can even hear the fluid in their belly jostling around when they roll over and things. This is usually a, a later, later uh, thing of, of, a, of a cirrhosis of the liver, though. Okay, mechanisms of capillary exchange. Was that where I was? 